Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Charles Cather here. And today I'm going to discuss a little bit about my affliction, uh, my disorder, ADHD. A uh, young lady, Milica Savovich, uh, she attends the Faculty of Legal and Business Studies in the Psychology Department, uh, Dr. Lazar Vrakatic's class. And she has asked me to share my experience with ADHD because they're doing something. They're studying ADHD or different mental disorders. <laughs> And uh, so she asked me to speak about it uh, here. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, living with ADHD. Uh, first of all, ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Uh, and this is something that I've been afflicted with, uh, you could say, for many, many years. Uh, when I was a child, when I was in primary school, I was always in, had a hard time focusing, setting still doing different things like that, and it, and it caused me to, I didn't do very well in school. I mean, I was never, I never took it serious, uh, but I had very, very hard times with mathematics and, and, you know, different things such as that that required a lot of focus and, and looking at something. I, I, man, I had trouble with it. I'd be looking at a, a big mathematical equation and my mind would be thinking about China or something, you know, something totally off the wall. It, it really causes you to have a, uh, in your mind to just randomly switch to different things and it's hard to focus on one particular thing and you know it caused me that way as a child uh, I, I I struggled that way and then I was always getting in trouble a lot I wasn't I was kind of a little troublemaker and uh, in school and so they asked me to be put on medication they sent me to the doctor the doctor said that I had ADHD but my parents did not want me to be put on medication because they thought it was just a child uh, there's a big um, debate in the USA about whether ADHD is actually a real disorder or if it's a uh, just a medical bunch of baloney that uh, the pharmaceutical companies want to pump children full of drugs or something. But regardless of, of if it exists or it does not, uh, I do suffer from something. I am not normal. Uh, I'm not the same as most other people that I know. Uh, so... I don't know what it should be called, but I believe that there is something called ADHD. But it also, it, it caused me little bits of anger issues. I had to see a psychologist when I was in eighth grade for anger issues uh, because I, I was always just yelling and, and being a jerk, you know, sometimes. Uh, I remember the reason I had to see an anger psychologist is because I was kicked out of about six different gymnasiums uh, basketball games because I was very, very loud and obnoxious and, and just silly as a young guy. And, uh, you know, the principal, uh, his first name was Rick. And in the USA, you never call your principal or anybody in a respectful position by their first name. And I approached him and I said, hey, Rick, I don't appreciate you doing this and this, this. And he said, hey, you shut up. He said, you're suspended for the rest of the year. And so thank God I shut up. But he forced me to see a psychologist and kick me out of school for a day or so. I don't remember. And uh, so when I look back, it was a lot of those things. And I was always easy, easily irritated. And I still am. It's, it's, it's like a really, I'm very, very impatient. Uh, so when I stand in a line somewhere, uh, it's like I'm instantly angry. I'm like, hurry up. I'm, I have to constantly talk to myself inside and tell myself, calm down, relax, you know, and, and try to be different. Um, your experiences with ADHD, ADHD as an adult, difficulties and advantages, how people treated you. Well, another thing when I look back, as, as I uh, slowly morphed into an adult, uh, I was working full time and I was going to college. And something that, that I remember well, uh, I, was a, I was a team leader in this big uh, children's furniture company. And I was, only eight, I was only 19, 20 years old at the time. And I was a manager or one of the bosses over like a lot of people, about 25 people. And they were all older, 30, 40s and, and different things like that. And I was a boss because I was very motivated. Uh, if there's something I can do, I do it well, you know. And I was running around like crazy man doing our job and I did really well. And they loved me there. Uh, but three different occasions, uh, some of the employees called the whole the HR department in my uh, company and they told them they thought I was on drugs, that I was on cocaine or some stimulant. 
and that I was, they thought it was just crazy that I was that way. And so three different times they took me for a drug testing, random drug testing, and I passed every time because I, I was never on any drugs of anything. But people just couldn't believe that I was that, run around that quick and, and talk like I do. And, and I, it, it still continued with anger issues. Uh, it's easy to set me off, you know. And, and for me, I've constantly got to do lots of inner, inner, uh, inner talk to myself. You know, it's been that way for ages and ages and ages. So when I meet new people, I'm, I'm doing tons of inner, th inter, inner um, talk, uh, debate with myself, telling myself, Charles, be quiet, don't move so much, relax, you know, constantly. You know, so it kind of gets old. So that's it. Advantages, you know, some of the advantages. I, I really like the energy level. A lot of people uh, wish they had a little bit of my energy because the minute I wake up in the morning, uh, I can be kind of grouchy, but I usually am ready to go. I mean, it doesn't matter what. I've always got energy. Uh, so that's maybe an advantage. It gives me a, a unique personality. I've got a very unique personality. I've never met too many people like me. Uh, so that's maybe some advantages of it, but there's not very many advantages. Uh, how do people treat you? Well, uh, treated me, you know, people think I'm strange, of course, and like I stated, you know, they thought that it was on drugs, and so many times now, I make a lot of videos on YouTube about Serbia, and I, I have lots of people on Facebook, and usually a lot of people that first meet me, they'll send me a message on Facebook or YouTube and say, what drugs are you on? Why are you acting that way, you know? And so that gets old, you know? Uh, so people treat me maybe as a freak, I guess you could say. Uh, experience with medications. Uh, like I said, my parents did not want to put me on medication uh, back when I was a younger person, uh, but there was a drug called Ritalin at the time, and it's still around today, but uh, they did not put me on it. I finally got put on medication when I was in, late in high school and or early college, and I, I took myself off of it, and then I put myself back on it about, oof, Probably six years ago, six, no, probably eight years ago, I put myself back on medication because I worked in management at many, many car companies and, and uh, a factory and, and different things. I was always a boss because I was very motivated and every company loves to have me there because I'm very good at what I do usually. Uh, but I, I, uh, um, I found that focusing is such a difficulty especially in car sales. When you're, when you're working in car sales, you're dealing with tons and tons of different customers. I, I can't remember names well. Uh, you know, a customer, if I'm talking on the phone to somebody and somebody comes in and says, Charles, instantly I forget everything that I'm, even where I'm at sometimes. Uh, even when I talk to the camera here sometimes, if I hear another noise, it's like, boom, you know, I, I can't focus. So the doctor, I went back to the doctor and he put me on a, a higher dosage of Adderall it's a stimulant, and he also gave me Xanax, which is to relax. And I always thought that was kind of odd that you would get a stimulant and a uh, depressant. Xanax is, is hardcore. So he told me, he said, twice a day I would take my milligrams of Adderall, which is a stimulant. And I asked the doctor, I said, why, if I'm already this way, why do I take a stimulant? And the way he explained it, he said, well, your brain... He said, part of your brain <clears throat> is going, one part is going really fast, the other part's going slow. He said, it's going fast to over, to compensate for the slowness of part of it. So when you take a stimulant, it speeds up the slower part and in turn drops the other and it puts you on an even keel. Uh, but the medication Adderall, it's, it's a hardcore stimulant. It's uh, very much abused in colleges in the USA. So every time I would fill my prescription, which was expensive. Uh, I paid a lot of money every month for, every week for insurance, about $150 a week was my insurance. And then my pills every month was like, I paid $50, but without insurance, it was like $350, some insane price. Uh, but Adderall really helped me focus and that's what I liked it for. Uh, so if I'm talking to someone and something else is going on, I can still focus. You know, it helped me do that. It helped me, you know, really, really uh, excel in, in different things after I was able to focus on it. So it did benefit me, but it was also tough. Uh, it would f cause me maybe for two days, no eating. I was never hungry. I forced myself to eat. I couldn't sleep. Uh, so that's why the doctor gave me Xanax to kind of 
kind of calm down. So I'm sure it's not good on your heart. Uh, but he told me Xanax, I could use it any time. Like if I'm getting really agitated or really frustrated, take one and it, you know, kind of knocks you down a little bit. But I think the medication did help me. Uh, but it also, you know, did some bad things like, like I just stated. Um, differences in treatment. Or, or sorry, experience with medications. That's it. And, and since I came to Serbia in 2010, I have not been on uh, medication. I have not taken any medication since then. I should have stated that. But uh, so since I've been here, I have had zero medication, zero Xanax, zero um, Adderall. Uh, and you asked me about treatment here in America, the difference between America and Serbia. When I came here to Serbia, I didn't bring my medication. And so I went up to the, my friend, his, he's a doctor, or his mom's a doctor in Zrenjanin. And so they got me in because I wanted to see if I could get my medication. And, and I went down and, and went into the crazy part of the hospital. There was crazy people wandering around. Seriously, it was scary. Uh, but that's where I, I saw his mother and she sat down. She said, now what is your problem? And I said, well, I have a adult attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And uh, she looks things up and she says, you know, we just don't do that here in Serbia. You know, she said, as a child, you can get that medication. But it's very hard. But she said, as an adult, you really cannot. You know, so it's, they really don't have that. And so many people here in Serbia, when I discuss this disorder, almost everybody says, oh, it's fake. It's not real. It's bull crap. But I, I, I disagree with that. I think it is a disorder. I think it, there is something uh, wrong with me uh, that makes it very life difficult at times you know it's hard to maintain relationships longest relationship I had with this girl was about a year and a half and because I I, I get angry and I I find something like something about somebody even if I really like them that I don't like and it starts driving me nuts and I'm hard to deal with you know and so it's it's uh it's got its issues but since I've been here in Serbia zero medication uh so, and I'm still functioning here, but I haven't had to do a lot of really focusing on things. Uh, one little bit of an issue without the medication, I work for this company, Work and Travel Group, and I've been uh, inputting uh, the setting appointments for all of the students going to the U.S. Embassy. It's like a tedious task. You have to do it online. You have to do one, put one thing here, this, this, this. And I messed up like a few times because I've really got to sit there and focus and think, you know, exactly what's going on. And it's hard to do, you know. Uh, and, and the other thing, the other worst part about it is just how your mind really just wanders off on other topics. So even when I sit here discussing this with you, trying to go through these questions, I start thinking of other things. And it's, it's hard to do, hard to deal with. But, uh, you know, that's who I am and that's my disorder. I think Serbia really needs to, uh, you know, consider that there is something wrong with people. I've got a lot of Serbian people that have even written me and said, hey, what medications do you take here in Serbia for your disorder? Because I have that same thing. I know I've got problems, but people tell me it's, it's just who you are, you know. So I think Serbia needs to open its mind a little bit and, and go out there. I'm not saying to... Uh, force all, all young kids that are hyperactive into medicine or anything like that because I disagree with that. But there needs to be other options for, for these people that are struggling with that. Anyway, that's it, my friends. Hope I helped you a lot. Good luck in your future. Take care. Bye-bye.